So about three years ago, I made nine weapon concepts, one for each class. They were fun to make, so I made more. 78 more, making the total 87 weapon concepts. I was originally aiming for 100 concepts, 11 for each class and a single all-class weapon, but I lost interest over time and I was only able to make 87. So with this video, and if all goes well, the other 8 videos, I want to remake all my original 87 concepts and make 13 new ones. Today, I'll be remaking 10 weapon concepts and creating a single new one for Scout. Before we start, there are two rules I'm following for these videos. Rule number one, I must stay true to the original concept. If I don't like the original concept I made three years ago, too bad. I just have to make do with what I'm given. Rule two, I want to make something that has been made before. This one is hard to do as, well, there have been many weapon concepts that have been made in TF2's over 15 years of life, and it's highly possible some of these have been done before. If I find out I create a concept that has been done by someone before, I'll try my best to make mine more original in some way. Last thing I want to say before we start, I want to apologize for my microphone quality. I have been debating on getting a new headset for a few months now. So if this video takes off, I'll probably buy a new one so my further videos can be higher quality. I have made custom subtitles, so turn it on if you need it, or if you just like subtitles. Now without further ado, here are 11 weapon concepts for the scout. Number 1, the Pace Maze. The old stats in this weapon were as followed. You would be 30% faster when this weapon was equipped, but 20% slower when it was unequipped. You would have a 15% faster firing speed with the Pace Maze, and upon killing a player you would gain a speed boost, similar to that of the Disciplinary Action. Speaking of the Disciplinary Action, the speed boost it and other items give, such as the Conjurer, would not stack with the Pace Maze's speed boost. Finally, you would have a 20% damage vulnerability when this item is equipped. Now this isn't too bad, but some of these numbers need to be adjusted. So this is what I came up with. Instead of you being 30% faster when this weapon is equipped, you're now only 20% faster. And instead of being 20% slower, you're now only 10% slower. This makes it so now, with this weapon deployed, you're not as fast as 100% boost babyface scout, but still notably fast. Also when not deployed, you move at the same speed as 0% boost babyface scout. The old and new speed values should be on the screen right now. I've kept the speed boost on kill, but changed the swing speed to 20% and the damage vulnerability to 10%. I lowered the speed increase so this weapon doesn't become an upgrade to the babyface, although I would prefer this weapon over. Not that the babyface is bad or anything, but, well, it's not notably good either. So that's the pace piece, my first ever weapon concept. Now into the next weapon, a favorite of mine, dual pistols, or its new name, Brother Arms. This weapon is two dual M1911 pistols, one of my favorite pistols for the high caliber and heavy metal frame. I've seen many versions of dual pistol weapon concepts, and I know this kind of goes against the second rule, but I can't help it. The old version, simply named dual pistols, very creative, I know, used to have a 25% faster firing speed, and 50% additional ammo capacity. This was all at the cost of a 33% damage penalty and 50% less ammo on the wearer. Pressing Alt Fire would shoot the right pistol, with the primary fire of course firing the left one. I don't like this original concept at all. The fire rate of 0.11 seconds is too fast, being similar to that of the SMG, and the damage penalty and spare ammo amount was just too low. Plus with a capacity of 18 and only 18 in reserve, it left you with little ammo to work with. So here's my new version. The Brother Arms has a 15% damage bonus, making it 17 instead of the pistol's normal 15. This reflects the caliber of the M1911, that being .45 auto. Speaking of the M1911's caliber, its larger caliber means that a single M1911 has a 9 round capacity compared to the pistol's 12 round capacity. Now I know the M1911 in real life can hold up to 7 to 8 rounds, but for the sake of having the ammo reserve and the loaded ammo be the same multiple, I made it up. That means two can store 18 rounds, which explains the 50% ammo capacity increase compared to the stock pistol. Dueling two pistols means that reloads will take a tremendous amount of time, so a 40% slower reload time made sense for this weapon. Additionally, firing two pistols at the same time usually comes with the downside of being less accurate, 20% less accurate to be exact. Shooting two pistols usually means you'd be outputting shots faster. But at such a high ammo capacity and damage increase, it made me want to add a 66% slower firing speed to make the weapon more balanced.
Finally, I remove the attribute, alt fire fires the right pistol, and instead, the gun will alternate between shots on which one to shoot. Two out of eleven done, and nine more to go. God, this is going to take a while. This next weapon is based on the combat shotgun from Fallout 4, and would look the same or similar to it. Wait a minute. These two look the exact same. Oh well. The old combatant shotgun, again, a very creative name, has the following stats. A 33% damage bonus and a 66% ammo capacity increase are the upsides, and the many downsides are a 50% decrease in reload speed, 20% increase in bullet spread, 38% less primary ammo, and no random critical hits. Finally, this weapon uses a magazine and reload all ones. For this new version, I wanted to stay true to the source material, as I wish to do with many of the concepts in the game. The combat shotgun in Fallout 4 has a pretty good firing speed. This isn't even considering the auto receivers it has. So, this should reflect it with a 20% faster firing speed. This version of the combat shotgun has a drum magazine, so you'd think that it would have an absurd ammo capacity of 32, like in Fallout 4, 12, like in Fallout 3. But no, there's only 33% ammo capacity increase, making the total 8 rounds to spare. This was because having 12 or 32 would just be too much, and additionally, I want to try to refrain from making my percentages 100% or above. Through testing on my part, the combat shotgun in Fallout 4 seems to be less accurate than the scattergun of TF2, so I went with 10% less accuracy. This stat is on the back scatter, which seemed to share a similar spread to that of the combat shotgun, so it seemed perfect. On the Fallout wiki, it states that the combat shotgun in Fallout 4 has 8 pellets per shot, so I added 20% less pellets per shot, which not only reduces it from 10 to 8 to be more aligned with the combat shotgun in Fallout 4, but also inherently reduces the damage. Because of the fast firing speed of this weapon, players might try to spam it in tight quarters, so I made it so the wearer has 25% less primary ammo. Although players will still spam it, at least they'll think twice before wasting such a finite ammo source. Finally, it is not stated, but the weapon does have a 460% increase in reload speed. The stat is invisible because I don't like large percentages, as I said previously, and because of the weapon having to reload a magazine rather than a single reload, I assume players would infer it has a longer reload than the normal scattergun. The Street Sweeper is based on the real-world shotgun of the same name, but a lot of the research was gathered from Call of Duty for reload times, damage, and fire rate. The original version was very interesting, but they didn't want to make something new, so instead of making two new versions of the Street Sweeper, one staying true to the original, and the other starting from scratch. The old version had a 66% clip size increase, 20% faster firing speed, and when you killed a player while mid-air, you'd build shockwave. The downsides of this weapon are a 50% reload speed decrease, 25% vulnerability when reloading, and a 10% increase in damage falloff. When you gathered enough shockwave, you could press alt fire to release a burst of energy that would push enemies away. Overall, the stats on this are good, but some numbers need to be changed in order to capture the image of the Street Sweeper in TF2. For the version that's staying true to the original, I'm keeping the 66% clip size increase, 50% reload speed decrease, and the shockwave feature. I'll be lowering the vulnerability while reloading to 10% as 25% is a bit too high, and raising the firing speed to 60 as it seems more true to the Street Sweeper in Call of Duty. I'm ending a 33% damage penalty as having high ammo capacity and fire rate but not lowering the damage would make it overpowered as hell. Speaking of damage, instead of more damage fall off, I'm adding 25% less damage ramp up as scatter guns in TF2 usually have 175% compared to other guns. Finally, since this is a version that's staying true to the original, I'm keeping the shockwave feature, of course. The rework of the original is similar to the staying true to the original version, but retaining all stats I previously just mentioned, but removing the shockwave feature, replacing it with the ability to mini crit while airborne. To be able to mini crit, you must be airborne for at least one second. Other than the new airborne stat, the two new versions of the old weapon are the exact same. In the end, I prefer the former, as having a shockwave feature in a weapon is something TFG's never done before, and I would like to see it like that's ever going to happen. This weapon and the next are pretty basic, but are new concepts that TF2 doesn't currently have for the scout. The athletic garments are a pair of gloves for the scout that allows him to wall run, like how they do in Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare. 
Although, in that game, they have exoskeletons. Unlike here, where Scout just has gloves. Reading the old athletic garments, I'm not really sure what my original intention was. Were they a melee? Were secondary? The stat fire in any primary weapon makes you lose grip faster implies it was secondary. But the idea of Scout punching people is pretty funny. <laughs> I think it'd be funny to see a bunch of Scouts running around two for servers having little bugs in it. Anyways, the old athletic garments allowed you to run 20% faster if you had the gloves equipped, but you'd be 20% slower if you were wall running. Additionally, as previously mentioned, if you fired any primary weapon, you'd lose grip faster. Over time, as you wall ran, you'd slowly descend as you can't wall run forever. For the new version, I'll be retaining the 20% slower move speed while wall running, but removing the 20% faster move speed when equipped, because I want my only melee that gives you speed to be the pace pace. The new stats are 40% faster deploy speed, 40% faster holster speed, and a 75% damage penalty, because this weapon is literally Scout's tiny hands punching people. Finally, instead of firing a weapon, swapping to a different weapon will make you lose height faster than normal. As I said previously, this weapon concept and the prior are pretty basic, but is something Scout doesn't have in his arsenal. The snack sack is a backpack with a sandwich and a box spilling out. The positive stats are a passive regen of plus 2 health per second and plus 25 additional overall health. The downsides are pretty light, only giving you a 10% speed penalty, 50% slower heal rate, and the inability to pick up health packs. I said the downsides are pretty light because they don't seem to balance the increase in survivability Scout now has with his larger health pool and passive health regen. So I will retain the old positive stats in the weapon, but ramp up the downsides. The new snack sack will still have the same old positive stats, but with the addition of the inability of being overhealed and removing the 50% slower heal rate and replacing it with a 90% less healing from all sources, so medics and dispensers. This item is good for solo scouts, as you get a passive healing and overall health boost with the cost of not being able to be healed effectively by health kits and or medics and being slightly slower too. This weapon was reworked a lot. Originally, the scat shot was a weapon designed for being up close to your target, like practically up their ass close. But I thought I would reverse this concept and make it so it's better far away than up close. The stats on the old version were 14% increased damage ramp up, plus 10% ranged damage resistance, 47% decreased fall off, and 33% increased spread. After initially trying to fix this, I ended up not liking it, and trying to make a weapon out of the idea was redundant, since all the scout's weapons are effective up close. So instead, I flipped the idea and made a weapon that's more effective from far away. The new version, the Slugger, is a revolver shotgun that fires slugs, hence the name. The design is based off the NTS-255 revolver shotgun. The stats for this new gun are not at all similar to the old version of this weapon. Obviously, this weapon uses slugs instead of buckshots, and inherently, this means this weapon will have an increased effective range, similar to that of the revolver. This weapon reloads via a clip, which also means a slower reload. It also has the penalties of 40% slower firing speed and minus 33% clip size. The main feature of this weapon is that, on a critical hit, the projectile will penetrate players, similar to the Machina. The Pisha is a rusty and homemade revolver, wielded and most likely created by the Scout. The original design was inspired by, you guessed it, Fallout 4, specifically the two-shot enchantment. The original stats were, plus one bullet per shot, plus 150% damage, minus 50% clip size, plus 260% attack interval, and plus 100% reload speed. As you can see, this weapon has many stats going well over 100%, and that was because I used the pistol as a base, but for this new version I'll be using the revolver as the base. The additional bullet would fire 0.1 second after the initial shot, and wouldn't consume any additional ammo. The new version, the chain fire, is retaining the old idea but putting the spin on it. When firing, you would fire an additional bullet that would fire at the same time, but with a plus 3 degree deviation. Due to the faultiness of this gun, it would have 20% less accuracy and deal 25% less damage. The twist of this weapon is that after dealing 500 damage with any weapon, you can press Alt Fire and it will fire all rounds and you clip at once, all deviating in a random plus 9 degree direction. Upon pressing Alt Fire, you are dealt 30 damage as the weapon explodes into your hand, and this weapon is unusable until you resupply. You might think 500 is a little too high, but considering that a skilled scout can solo a 300 health heavy with ease has warranted me to put the 500 damage to be fully charged. That's one of the unique things about TF2. Even if you're an 80 health spy, you can still solo a 300 health heavy with a little finesse. Or a medic versus a heavy and a soldier. If you hit all your shots with the Blutsauger, you can solo both of them. 
Honestly, I can go on about my TF2's bullshit, but that's not why you're here. This next weapon hasn't gone through too much change, but I did rework it so it's not too self-centered. The Resisting Intoxication, which is a terrible name, and I won't change it in a minute, is a bottle of scrum heat that Scout has stolen off Demo Man and repurposed as a thermal weapon. The weapon, when thrown, would allow you to force the target to deal 50% less overall damage to you. The new version, the Drunken Nullifier, is similar to the original, except for the better name, as it reduces the target damage output, not just for you, but your whole team by 50% for 10 seconds, or 2.5 seconds if they're being healed. This weapon has a 20 second cooldown, same as the Jurati in that book. Honestly, this weapon could be given to the Demo Man, but I like the idea of Scout stealing Demo Scrumpy and repurposing it as well. Second to last weapon. This weapon just appears as an ordinary can of soda, but it's much more complex. The old version and the new version are very similar except for a few tweaks. The old version, Targeted Advantage, allowed you to gain a buff depicting the class's personal buff, and pressing Alt Fire before drinking the soda would change the class effect. The buff would have been like a passive healing with a medic effect, a speed increase with a scout effect, a health increase with a heavy effect, and so on and so forth, but I never finished the effects all the way. The new version, finished of course, did the same thing as the last version, giving you a class specific effect. Graveyard, or called a different name I can't say on YouTube, is a soda mixed with other sodas, and drinking this will give you a random effect instead of you choosing the effect like the last version. I'll go over the 9 effects in a bit, but for now let's cover the other stats. Of course while drinking this, you can't attack because you're stuck in a drinking animation. Spawning and resupply don't affect the recharge time, and the weapon is on a cooldown upon the start of a match. This means when the match starts you can't just immediately drink it, you have to wait out the minute timer. And yes, this weapon has a minute recharge, which is warranted, due to the 15 second effect duration. Now onto the 9 effects, which I'll just put on screen because this video has gone on for too long already. The final weapon, and the only one on this list that doesn't have an old version. This weapon, the Mule Bug, is inspired by one of my favorite guns of all time, the Mazda C96. I'll be using the stats from Red Dead Redemption 2 to decide what the stats in TF2 should be. Let's get right to it. I decided to make this weapon a 1 to 1 of the Mazda in Red Dead 2, which was hard to do, so let's go over the process together. First, I'd understand the health conversion between the games. Let's say the average health in TF2 is 150. As shown here by my friend, who has a max health core and is not affected by tonics, takes 5 shots before going down, and would be 6 to kill him. Now that we know 6 shots can kill a player in RDR2, so if we do 150 divided by 6, that's 25. So if the monster of RDR2 was added into TF2, it would deal 66% more damage than the stock pistol. In hindsight, or after recording this, I think I should have moved away from my friend here, because I think the damage ramp up maybe deal more damage. But for the sake of me having done way too much research on this weapon, I'm just going to say screw it. But of course, if y'all want, you can always do testing and get back to me if I was wrong. The negatives of this weapon are a 40% slower firing speed, a 20% slower spread recovery, and a 16% smaller quick size. I was going to change the reload speed, but the reload speed of the Mazarin Arnier 2 is oddly enough extremely fast compared to TF2. 0.6 seconds compared to 1 second. But because the reload speed in Rockstar games are extremely unrealistic and fast, I kept the TF2 reload speed. The reason for the spread recovery speed penalty is because in RDR2, the Mazar spread recovery is very slow. So of course the Mazar in TF2 will have a slower spread recovery, 1.5 seconds instead of the normal 1.25. The Mule Bug was pretty much a carbon copy of the Mazer in RDR2, and this wasn't done out of laziness, but because I needed something to base the stats on. So I hope y'all are okay with me making copies of weapons from other games, and putting them into TF2 as weapon concepts. But if you guys don't like that, and wish for me to make weapons from scratch, I will happily do so. So this is finally the end of the video. I might make a soldier video next, but if this video doesn't do well, most likely I won't continue with the set weapon classes. Days of work and effort went to this video alone, so if no one watches these videos, then what's the point, you know? So like the video to show me you liked it, and subscribe if you want to get notified when more of these come out. Of course, spread the word, send these to your friends, and maybe they'll send it to their friends, so on and so forth. And hopefully, if enough people see this video and subscribe, I can get these videos monetized, and if I get monetized, then that means money for a better mic and editing software. Also, I plan for this video to release on the 25th of April, 
because that was when I made my very first weapon concept. But due to Premiere Rush being horrible editing software, I wasn't able to get out in time, and had to wait to buy the Pro version. Finally, to the creators of the art or other materials I showed, if you wish for me to remove those parts of the video with your art, I will happily do so. Using your art and materials made this a lot easier and faster to put out, but I totally understand if you want me to remove it. Of course, all links to the art used will be in the description, same as the music. I also wanted to thank my buddy, the most professional bastard I know, who helped me gather footage on this video. Anyways, I hope you all have a good day.